Hello, this is Freddy from Team PI Pokemon. And this is Summer. And this match that we're bringing you today is actually a really interesting match. We've got an old school Grin Greninja break uh, that Summer is playing on the left hand side. And on the right hand side, we're actually using exactly the same list as I played in my previous video, which is Rayquaza GX from the forthcoming Celestial Storm set. So Summer has won the flip and elects to go first. And this is a testing video. So we are allowing a few take backs just to see how the two decks pan out and uh, we actually did a best of three so funnily enough I've actually got a mulligan on the right hand side so Summer is playing a build with two enhanced hammers four splash energies Very much similar to the lists that were seen and that did really, really well in Madison Regionals earlier this year. I think it was Jake Ewart, so congrats Jake. Your list is being featured on this. So Summer, what do you start off with? A uh, Froakie and another Froakie on the bench. Brooklet Hill. And I start off with a Tapu Koko GX. Not the ideal starter, but could float stone that. And a Staryu with the Brooklet Hill. I'm a bit hesitant in recommending the the Splash Energy straight away, but it really much depends on what kind of supporter Summer decides to play in the rest of her turn. Okay, so she has passed. So I go and treasure straight away. And what I'm looking for is potentially a Lele, potentially a Rayquaza GX. So I've got the Rayquaza GX. I'm going to try and set up as quickly as possible. I'm thinking maybe two turns into it if Summer sets up very, very correctly and without any problems. She will have Shadow Stitching in play and all of my abilities will not be uh, we'll, we won't, won't be able to be used, so... I find an elixir. I don't think I actually get an energy from the first discard, which is dis disappointing. I put the energy on. And now it's Cynthia. There's nothing in my deck that I can actually Brookfit Hill. Um, I go for the Parallel City straight away. I suppose in a real match, I would Brooklyn Hill just to double check the resources. And I believe I Sycamore straight after that. Oh, I didn't Sycamore straight after that. I was just wondering because... Um, I thought maybe I might have uh, double supported there, I was, I was quite scared about it. But I actually used Tempest GX, flipped over the GX counter. And what does G Tempest GX do again, Summer? Um, discard your hand and draw can 10 cards. Can it be a t uh, used with a Grass Energy or a Light Yeah, energy? one Grass Energy. Okay. So it's definitely one Grass Energy. So I was, a bit, I was a bit fearful there, but I really have to go for it in this matchup. Summer hits me for 30. I think it's a 10 attack. I've forgotten the name of it. 40. 40. 10 to 40 because you have a choice, man. A rain splash. Rain splash. And I retaliate with an unfair 30, 60, 90, 120, 150 plus through belt. And this is the second turn. I'm hoping that she has no no uh, way out. If she doesn't, she can't find the Frogadier. Greninja doing what Greninja does best.
And by this stage, it's uh, it's looking very bleak for Summer. She's got the free retreat star, you. I mean, kind of thinking, should you really let the throw key get knocked out? I think at this stage, let the star you get knocked out because without a throw key, you can't get anything. The game's get over. She wisely decides to super rod her Froki back in and energy, just in case she can top deck her Froki. But it's not looking very good for uh, for Greninja right now. And this is the really the really cool thing I think about Rayquaza GX. Uh, you kind of think late game if Rayquaza doesn't get the setup, it can't go. So the strategy that I chose was to just go as aggressive as possible and before you know it, you just overwhelm. So it's 1-0. What was the most difficult thing, Summer, about that game? Uh, not drawing well. So drawing is an absolute, absolutely important advantage that any deck playing against Rayquaza could could have just Rayquaza just simply speaking just goes through its deck as quickly and as rapidly as possible and I think the appeal for some someone who's considering playing Rayquaza is just that it can get some victories very very quickly So we decide to bring in two guests. On the right hand side we have Clever. And on the left hand side we have Evie. Uh, Evie is dressed up as a Larian. Summer elects to go first in the second game. So I get another mulligan. And yet another mulligan as well. Summer so starts off with a throw key first turn. I start off with a Rayquaza, it's not ideal. However, I can use Tempest GX again. Some of you go for the Brooklet Hill, don't you? Another Brokey. There is an argument for Summer to attach the water energy onto the bench Brokey. Just in case the active uh, Brokey is knocked out. But that would have to be a decision that's made if you have two energy in your hand. Uh, with such a large hand, it was not a difficult decision for me to choose to play the N. I'm just leaping through using Brooklet Hill. Just having a quick look at the resources that are within the deck. I've got no target for Max Elixir. And I don't want to wait another turn, so I just Tempest GX straight away. Summer, it's your turn. Uh, evolve Evo Soda for probably the Frog of Deer. Wait. Oh no. And Brooklyn Hill. Oh, and Brooklyn Hill. Attach the Splash Energy. Uh, water Duplicates. Nice to see three Frog of Deer there. I straight off go off with uh, Mysterious Treasure and I'm really trying to get as many energy on the board as possible. So let's see how many I get to uh, put on the board. I only need two more energy on the board to knock 
summons active out. But remember, as soon as she has Greninja, it's Shadow Stitch, and I cannot access any more Rayquaza. So I search for Latios Prism, which has a colorless attack, 30, and I can attach an energy from any one of my uh, from my discard pile to each of my dragon Pokemon that are benched. And that is my general game plan. I'm just doing a little bit of calculation here at the moment. And I'm thinking, all right, okay, natural fact. If I am doing Latios Prism's attack, I need to try and make sure that there is a grass and a uh, lightning energy on, um, on the individual Pokemon that I'm attacking with the following turn. So that's why I just switch around. Uh, it is playtesting, so we're just trying to find the most optimal uh, plays, especially with the new deck. So here I have the potential to do 150, 160 damage. I need a parallel city. And now at this stage, I actually uh, change my mind because I'm thinking I can actually attack with the Coco. GX, which might be advantageous and could help protect my energies as well. With Coco GX, Coco GX is actually really useful because it does 130 base damage, so it doesn't have to have any additional damage uh, through Fighting Fury Belt. Choice Band, of course, doesn't work against non GX Pokemon like Greninja. So playing this, how are you feeling at this point of the game, Summer? Uh, mm, uh, I don't know. <laughs> it's not looking good, is it? No. no. What's going through your head right now when you're... Um, get the Greninja breaks up as quick as possible. Yeah. I mean, literally, I suppose the, the, the threat that's facing you right now is suddenly this 170 HP Tapu Koko GX and you have to you have to take that down. Uh, the issue is that Summer would have been at a greater advantage if she had one more turn and she had two more Greninja breaks uh, or two Greninja breaks out, potentially three with a choice man because Greninja Break has 170 HP so it could withstand the 130 hit uh, really at this moment in time I'm putting a lot of pressure on Summer forcing her to retreat potentially to sack the Froakie and allowing me to have access to yet another turn with abilities. So I think right now you're actually you're actually witnessing that there the Tapu Koko is really, really useful in this matchup. Uh, Eva Soda for the Greninja. Break. Yeah, Greninja break. Ultra Ball, the Choice Band, and the Star You. For Lale, Wonder Tank, Cynthia. We're just having a look through because um, at some point she could play as. Uh, super Rod, or I think it's a stretcher. She's got a Super Rod and stretcher, so if she lasts 
she can put those back into the deck as soon as she finds it. Oh, she's got the rescue stretcher in hand, so she just plays that. It's a nice proxy full art, Cynthia, there, Summer. <laughs> And that's a Tapu Shele on the bench as well. So we really are trying to figure out what to do now. Uh, but the good news is that the Parallel City has disappeared. Summer has a foothold back in this game. She wants to keep the Splash Energy on there and Shadow Stitch. Or potentially do 90 and allow me to have abilities. She Shadow Stitches. She doesn't really want me to use any uh, Lele for Guzma to knock out another Greninja. And the Lele is also on her bench as well. She's hoping that I don't have the Guzma. I do have the Guzma in hand, but I target the Staryu then because I'm, I'm going to suffocate her supply of energy. I always find if I go for Starmies, Staryus and Starmies, um, as long as I'm ahead more than three prizes, the game can swing my way, and and a, an N can be devastating. Not just for a Rayquaza versus a Greninja, but any game versus a Greninja. So right now I have 30, 60, 90, 120, 150, 180, 210, 240 potential damage. And I'm literally taking down everything that is in front of me. My Achilles Hill, however, is that I don't have another Rayquaza charged up. She just needs... Uh, she just needs to take out one of the Rayquazas. So, we kind of decided that it would be best to take out the Tapu Koko um, because it's still a threat. We just we just reminded ourselves that Giant Water Shuriken um, is something that needs to be used from the active position. Um, we may be wondering why didn't I take out why didn't we take out the um, the uh, active Rayquaza, but we felt that she needed to stay within uh, range of the prizes because she's now got three prizes left, as do I. And I'm under Shadow Stitching, so I take out a Greninja. Now that Field Blower really does help. She's locking that Rayquaza in the active position, so once it's damaged, it's not going anywhere too fast. And she has the advantage now because I can only take out Pokemon one prize at a time. That Lele is sitting on the bench. It is a target. So if I do hit the Guzma, it's going down. I think... What did I top deck there? Shaman. I got the Shaman. Now the Shaman's really, really interesting. This was actually a late addition uh, to this deck. So we took what we decided to do was we decided to take out the Oranguru from the previous video, and we tr decided to try out the Shaman. And not only does it strengthen the Greninja matchup, as you can, as you're about to see, but it also strengthens the Lycanroc matchup as well. And Flippity Flap is actually a really good starting attack as well. And so that Shaman is now just sitting on the bench, just waiting. 
Just waiting. So, we're seeing it through anyway. But the Shaman will, uh, will finish off the attack. So, 2-0 to Rayquaza. We feel if you've got the sp <laughs> if you've got the speed, and if you've got a great tech like Rally Back Shaman, uh, you can overcome it. Nevertheless, Greninja is still very very strong. It's a very strong deck and not to be underestimated. So we'll leave it there. We hope. Thank you very much. We hope you've enjoyed the video, and. Uh, Look out for more new format videos from us. Say bye, Summer. Bye. See you later.